the Bradford Pollinator Path. How to create a pollinator path on your street. Bradford Road in Cleveland Heights, Ohio is a residential street of 82 houses built in the 1920s on quarter acre lots. The front yards are traditionally landscaped mostly with lawns and foundation shrubs. The backyards are very deep and most take up half the lot. As is typical in many neighborhoods, each house has a tree lawn, sometimes known as a hell strip in other parts of the country. The city, rather than the homeowner, is responsible for planting trees on the tree lawns. But we've been thinking beyond trees. What if we created habitat corridors of tree gardens up and down the street? You've heard about the global insect apocalypse and the alarming decline of birds. Perhaps you've seen it in your own yard or park. This ecological decline is a result of prioritizing development at the expense of ecology. Entomologist Doug Tallamy's books, Bringing Nature Home and Nature's Best Hope, propose that we not constrain nature to parks and preserves. If each of us converts part of our yard and public spaces to a productive native plant community, we can collectively accumulate what Tallamy calls the homegrown national park. But how does the average person do this? Think about creating habitat corridors with your neighbors by gradually digging up your tree lawns. The Bradford Pollinator Path participants did just that. First, we checked with the Cleveland Heights Planning Department to see if there were any regulations or requirements for the tree lawn. We were told that the two issues we needed to be aware of were possible utility access and clear visibility for pedestrians and vehicles. Otherwise, we could plant away. Residents dug up small gardens of approximately three feet by three feet. Our own ecological guidelines included native species only and no herbicides or pesticides or fertilizers. We advised mulching the first year until the plants filled the space, but only with undyed shredded bark mulch, wood chips, or leaves. And we told them to leave the leaves throughout the winter to protect overwintering insects, feed the birds, and improve the soil. We also encouraged residents to dig the garden deeper than the surrounding pavement to bring rainwater into the garden not into the sidewalk or the street. Most lawns and tree lawns are built up and drain the water away from the plants. What sense does that make? We advised some sort of fencing to alert dog walkers to respect the garden. Native plants were sourced from the annual plant sale at the Nature Center at Shaker Lakes at a cost of 18 to $20 for a plug pack of eight young plants. The summer sun plug pack, for example, included Asclepius incarnata, rose milkweed, Lobelia cardinalis, cardinal flower, and Agastache funiculum, blue giant hyssop. We installed attractive signs to signal our intention to create a biological corridor for pollinators. What can we say? Plant it and they will come. For example, a monarch laid her eggs on Asclepius tuberosa, butterfly milkweed, and there we had three caterpillars right beside the sidewalk. This is the house you saw earlier. What a beautiful garden by the end of the summer. This year we expect everyone to expand their pollinator patch and more neighbors to join in. Everyone is eager to mow less and feed insects and birds more. Culver's root, cardinal flowers, beloved by hummingbirds too, and black-eyed Susan. Purple coneflower. The neighbors are loving this. The butterfly milkweed seed pods ripened, and we're sharing seeds and dividing plants to expand our gardens. But wait, why stop at the tree lawn? 
Here's our house in 2016 when we moved in. There were four non-native species in the front yard. Three years and lots of fun later, there are more than 27 native species. Start small. Start now. Dig up your grass and plant natives. Be part of the homegrown national park.